Hey, welcome back to the channel. I've been um, been troubled by um, hockey card collecting recently, and the fact that nobody seems to want anything but the upper deck young guns of, a, of certain players. So I kind of wanted to do a deep dive on the data and um, see, you know, what we saw, what you you know, what you kind of see in the data, and whether um, I should, whether I can make some predictions around what I expect the future to bring. And I think, um, long story short, uh, I really think that the current focus of young guns and above all else uh, is going to change. And it, it might already have started a little bit uh, because, you know, basically anybody who's bought a young guns since the uh, 2020 upper deck uh, cards have were released is just basically bleeding out. Um, and the when you look at the grading numbers, the amount of these cards that are now getting graded are uh, increasing at such a rate that uh, it's really going to be problematic when people realize that there's just so much of this stuff out there and it, they're not worth um, collecting. Now, granted, most of the people who are buying these are not worth, or they're not collecting the cards. They're just looking to make uh, make a buck. Uh, but you know, I think in both cases, uh, you know. I guess maybe it will start to serve collectors well because people, you know, prices are going to come down. They're going to continue to come down. And lastly, I think, my opinion, again, prediction, big prediction, Connor Bedard, life-changing, you know, franchise-changing talent. Um, unfortunately, Chicago Blackhawks won the, um, uh, won the, the lottery, so they'll have the first chance of picking him, and they're kind of a despicable organization. Given the uh, sexual assault charges and the fact they really haven't done anything to correct their behavior, but be that as it may, um, the presence of Connor Bedard and the hype around him is going to be so insane that thousands and th like every one of his cards that gets pulled is going to immediately be sent into grading, and it's going to lead to such a huge supply, and it's really going to mark um, you know a, a, a change in the marketplace. So let's dive into a few of the the detailed stats that are, um, I guess, leading me to, to make these types of uh, projections. When, um, when we look at the, and, and so what I did is I, is I went in and I took a look at all of the, um, I guess, popular graded Young Guns cards from each year, from 2013 up to um, 2000. Um, I guess even what 2022 technically, uh, even though that's still in the process of being released. And what I saw is that you have so you know gradually as you got through time, you went from having very few players um, being graded uh, over and I, I used really over a thousand cards to um, virtually you know all of the top uh, you know. 20 rookies this year, right, being uh, in some ways being already uh, at really high levels. Um, you know, if I look back, right, I'll show some graphics too to help so you're not just looking at my face. So in 2013, uh, we really only had one um, player that was more than, you know, graded more than a thousand times, right, and that is uh, Nate, Nate McKinnon, right, and that makes sense. He's a generate, he is a generational talent. Um, when you look at his cards, there are about 2,000 graded between nines and tens. And, um, you know, back, what you'll see, what I've, what I've also seen is that the, um, the ratio of nine versus tens used to be pretty good back in 2013. And further you get up the chain, not really bad. Um, so again, one player has uh, one more than 1,000 cards uh, graded. 2014, not much different. One player, Leon Dreisaitl, another amazing talent, uh, a little over a thousand graded. Then you get into the Connor McDavid year, and you know obviously Connor McDavid's been graded um, umpteen times, but you also had uh, Mikko Rantanen, uh, Artemi Panarin, Dylan Larkin, and Jack Eichel who had pretty good grading numbers. So you've got one guy who's been graded over four thousand times. And four guys have been graded over a thousand. So you start seeing this inflection point where it's like, okay, there's some interest. Connor McDavid drove some interest. When we get into 2016, I've got one guy who's over 3,000 cards graded. That's Austin Matthews, another one of these top players. 
Um, and you've got seven in total that are over a thousand, right? Matthews, Braden Point, Sebastian Ajo, um, and some others. Now, 2017 was a bit of a lull in the uh, collecting space because of the rookie crop. Um, so, in the end, um, you know there was only one uh, car, one player who was graded more than a thousand times in um, in the 2017 class. Uh, that's Brock Besser, and nobody's really thrilled about having his card. 2018, one graded greater than 2003, greater than a thousand. Um, 2019. We got Jack Hughes over the 4,000 mark, um, one over 3,000, one over two, two over 2,000, two over 1,000. Now we start getting into the real rarefied air, 2020, 2021. Um, Kirill Kaprizov, over 5,000 cards graded of his. Now that's just from the last two, you know, two years ago. So he's already has more cards graded than McDavid. Kind of gives you, an, an, you know, a good sense for the print run. Um then you have Lafreniere, you have Tim Stutzla, and a bunch of others. Jason Robertson, who's kind of coming up quickly. Um, you know, one guy greater than 5,000, one guy greater than 3,000, two over 2,000, and four over 1,000. So, like, you're starting to see much more, much, much more graded. Then we get into 2021, and here's where things are really going to get, they're getting ugly. Um, Cole Caulfield, right? 4,600 cards between his nines and tens have already been graded. And this is still the latest, latest um, you know, release, the 2021. Uh, well, no, sorry, it's not the latest release. 2022 is the latest release, but it's the, um, it's the latest full year. And what's interesting about a lot of the cards from 2021 is the percentage of nine versus tens is um, the, the ratio is off. You would hope you would hope that there would be more tens graded than nines, but like Caulfield in, in particular, only 40% of, uh, of the cards that are graded a nine or a 10 graded a 10, right? So you've got more nines out there. So you have people, not only are they trying to grade more cards, but they're getting disappoint, more disappointing results. You've got, um, and then you have, you know, in this case, you got seven, eight, nine guys over a thousand uh, cards graded. And we're still seeing lots of uh, volume on those. I think in one of the latest stats, you know, Cole Caulfield is one of the highest quantity cards graded like in March. So that is, that means that supply ain't slowing down. And, you know, I think back six months after um, Moritz Sider won the, uh, the Calder Trophy and it just was, you know, people just piled into getting his cards graded. And number one, he's a defenseman that really never you know, garner any attention in the hobby. Although I, I disagree with that, but that's just what it is. And um, you know, now you've got over 3,000 of his cards either graded a 9 or a 10, and they're just you know, cratering in value. Um, so let's look at 2022 Upper Deck Young Guns. Young Guns. Um, quality is a problem, right? More 9s, basically for every card graded a 10, you're getting two cards graded a nine. Um, you know, most of them are under 40% as far as that ratio goes. And you've got, um, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I got 11 guys. This is just series one. 11 guys already that are on pace to be graded well over a thousand times. And this thing's all, this product's only been out a few months. So you're starting or you're continuing to see this phase of monster grading numbers, um, decent players, right? Lots of potential, but monster card grading numbers that are only going to flood the market with supply. So I think what's going to happen in the end is that people are going to start looking away from the young guns. Uh, now, maybe there'll be a chance to pick up some older ones that make sense, right? Some guys who... Uh, I'll, uh, and I'll do that in a future video because I do think there are some opportunities, not right now, but soon. Uh, you're going to see people start abandoning the young guns. And uh, you know, it's going to take time. It's going to happen over the next couple of years. But the, uh, the days where everybody is just coming to your table as a dealer looking for young guns cards, they're going to be behind us soon. Let me know what you think. Let me know if, uh, I mean, if, God, good Lord, if you've stayed through this whole video to this point. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me. And I'll uh, talk to you soon.